Hello, you are here watching this video because there are some untenable microvita corruptions piling up inside of you undetected I am afraid. Your body mind may resolve some of them to some extent but the rest of them will blow up one day upon reaching criticality. When that happens then based upon the symptoms the doctor will label them as some or the other disease so that they can prescribe a pill or a procedure. Now we have all recovered from sicknesses after gulping down some pharmaceutical, right? Or did we? At least that's how we have been reconciling the usual practice of swallowing some artificial chemical and the subsequent progression out of an illness, at least the smaller ones. What a fantasy! Because elementary statistics tells us that just because something happens after another event many times, it does not necessarily imply a cause and effect relationship between them. So what is the real story? Let's jump right into this strange message from Sri P. R. Sarkar, the preceptor of Microvita Neosciences. Disease is caused by negative microvita. Let's investigate just that one sentence first. If there is any truth in this statement, then you may want to pay close attention for some 13 minutes because as you listen, you will find yourself holding the keys to your unresolved and upcoming challenges, not just limited to your physique. Some leading scientists have found that certain dense bodies in the blood of sick people grow up into various germs like bacteria. But this rarely happens in the blood of apparently healthy people. What are these dense bodies? More recently, some naturally occurring proteins have been found to change their shape and instantly become an infectious, self-propagating life form. Some of these prions, as they are called, actually help us in certain ways, in which case they may be termed as an example of positive physical microvita. But then many of them turn around and start damaging neighboring tissues, in which case they represent negative microvita constructs. All physical life forms have their own psychology and that's why two chemically similar molecules may behave totally differently in the same biological situation as observed empirically. Just like bad company may spoil one's behavior, in the same way well-behaved proteins have been found to automatically refold into abnormal disease-causing forms when in the company of other such ill-behaving molecules. This is a giveaway clue of the subtler parts of their existence influencing each other. Besides prions, other convoluted counterparts of healthy proteins have also been discovered. These may not be infectious but do play a negative role in various lifestyle diseases like heart disease, diabetes, Alzheimer's, etc. In the second video on Microvita, we saw that all biological cells and microbes are nothing but polymorphic manifestations of some base physical microvita. That explains the occurrence of specific germs along with different chronic conditions like cancer and arthritis. That's why some of the main symptoms of many of these supposedly non-infectious disorders, for example multiple sclerosis, can also be explained as arising out of undiscovered infections. Now all these examples were of comparatively more obvious kind, but if you take any disease, disorder, limitation, etc., it will be characterized by either an excess of unwanted useless dysfunctional stuff and or a depletion of wanted useful functional stuff. This gives us the opportunity to debunk some half-truths here. 
For starters, by undesirable stuff, we don't just mean trite toxins, singularly feared by the serial detoxers who are yet to single out and install the more deceptive miscreants, shoddy microvita constructs, shrouded inside your healthy meals and lifestyle. Thus, the usual adage that there is only one disease, which is toxemia, is only half the story. Yes, toxins do botch up your biopsychology, leaving you more exposed to negative microvita intimidations. And so, in microvita neosciences, we get a bit more precise by emphasizing that it's actually about the microbalance between your positive and negative microvita formations and not just about senseless toxicants. These pointers hopefully square off the first statement from Shripiya Sarkar for you. Let's dig into the second one. When people take allopathic medicine to cure a disease, it disturbs the ecological balance of the body because more negative microvita get concentrated at the point of your disease. We all know that allopathic drugs stifle your body's natural defensive response to any assaults by negative microvita. But many consumers of allopathy do not realize that such an unnatural manipulation of your biology also sets off a whole new set of delinquent processes. Some common examples are illustrated here. Feel free to pause. Hope you have gleaned the usual sticky point here. The fact that most of us let allopathy off the hook by lightly acknowledging that yes, they do ignite a few side effects while scrubbing out external symptoms. No, their side effects commonly swept under the carpet are actually the main effects because they are much more long lasting and wide ranging than generally assumed. Their subterfuge is not just limited to the particular organ or bioprocess they try to bully. 
So keeping in mind any health troubles stalking around, let's see what Sri Priya Sarka says next. Allopathic medicines do not kill diseases. They die by their own natural death. Although the medicine may check the disease, the increased concentration of negative microvita can overcome the effect of the medicine. In fact, the increased concentration of negative microvita caused by allopathic medicines creates many new types of diseases. So that's the deal here. Temporary relief bartered away for new, bigger, complex diseases in the future. At least that's what the statistics seem to confirm. Harsh allopathic chemicals are known to cause stomach sores, a common reason of stomach pain and bleeding. Then that toxic insult is meted out to your blood, which is such a tender medium to play with. You probably know that the one and only liver you have single-handedly breaks down all these toxicants. Sometimes the resultant byproducts are more noxious than the drug itself. And what's toxic to your liver is even more toxic to your bone marrow, the home to your stem cells. Last but not least, your much abused kidneys bear the brunt cleaning up the allopathic mound of garbage after you Already some 7% of your drugs are genetically engineered and if genetically modified foods kill and maim, what can you expect from such so-called medicines? These facts reveal a mercenary attitude to profit from each and every one of your symptoms without much regard for your overall safety and well-being. Before stabbing you with their prescription, how much did the allopath try to seek out the real root causes behind your particular set of symptoms? Without knowing them, wouldn't one be barking up the wrong tree because any given symptom can be due to so many different factors. For example, a disease could arise due to a dearth of a very wide variety of micronutrients including some special, mostly unknown ones. Mismatch between your diet and your mind-body microvita makeup is another big cause. Rampant infestations of aberrant microvita, both physical and superphysical, are the next biggest cause. Absence of many paranutritives due to the way you eat your foods is something we'll cover subsequently. Next on the line is the usual lifestyle that is corrupt as per new scientific guidelines. Sluggish organs deconditioned in any of the other ways are also the common bane of our times. Obesity, diabetes, heart disease, ED, etc. all arise from some permutation and or combination of these same set of factors. Just the details vary depending upon your personal history, civics and geography. I shouldn't have been surprised when I found that most of the time the allopaths do not even understand how exactly a medicine works. Forget about the biodynamics of the health condition they purportedly target. Fortunately, we have self-guided life factors living inside of us which know what to do as long as we allow them to by maintaining a fairly conducive, vibrant atmosphere. This is what Sri P. R. Sarkar meant when he said that in order to kill negative microvita before the end of their lifespan, the number of positive microvita has to be increased. Only by increasing the number of positive microvita is the unnatural death of negative microvita possible. Appreciating the motley life factors involved within any disorder or limitation will better enable us to surmount it. So given your problems today, how do you actually go about preempting, pulverizing and prevailing upon the incessant onslaught of parasitic and other pernicious microvita patterns prevalent around you? Oops, ran out of time for that.